Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel. And um, a lot have been asking since I talked about Intel, kind of looking at the future and saying, well, maybe we should do a 64-bit only processor. And what came to mind to a lot of people is, well, what's the difference? Why is 64 bits better than 32? Um, and, you know, these are numbers. What is there really a difference? And there is a huge difference. Um, so for a long time, we've been working like the first PCs. We're working on, you know, 8-bit. An 8088 was an 8-bit machine. Well, technically an 8-bit machine. Um, and the first 16 bits uh, arrived with, you know, like the 8286 and so on, and 8386 and then 486. And we had then 32-bit operating systems and 32-bit processors. So what does it all mean? You know, why is it better when we move on? Well, first of all, in terms of the computer and the usability of all of this, 64 bits is better for the access of more information at the same time. It can send and receive much more info at the same time, which speeds up things. The 64-bit architecture can see more hardware. For example, one of the things that I get as a question is people buying a PC that has, say, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And they'll come up to me and say, why do I see only 4 gigabytes of RAM in my 16 gigabyte machine? Well, that's because you installed a 32-bit Windows. 32-bit cannot see more than 4 gigabytes of RAM. It's its upper limit. Why? Because the RAM memory has an address. So every little space of RAM has addresses. It's like your postal address where you live. Well, as you have more and more RAM, these addresses become bigger and bigger. They need more space. And to have more space, you need to move on to a 64-bit processor. It can see the extra space. So there's all, all sorts of things like that, including even um, you know size of hard drives and, and, and types of hardware you'll use. So 64-bit is definitely the way to go. And, you know, someday later in the future will probably be even more than that. We'll be at 128 bits, whatever. It's going to move on as the years go by and give us more powerful computing. It's also known to be more secure in general than 32-bit operating systems in the way that it's designed. Now, the question that you'll say is, yeah, but... Right now, if we have 64 bits, we can run 32-bit software, so that's kind of cool. So I don't see the advantage of a 64-bit only processor. Well, that's the thing. A 64-bit processor right now, like the Intels and the AMDs that are out, are working on an architecture that you can address the 64-bit information, but it has to actually cater and have... 32-bit instructions so that your 32-bit software can still work. So that technically, the way that it's done in the processor can slow it down somewhat, which means you might not be getting the full speed of what the processor is capable because we have to do legacy stuff. It's like when we talk about Windows all the time. Lots of legacy code so that it's compatible with things uh, five or seven or ten years ago that still can work. It is cool for the longevity of hardware and software, but it is a problem when you want to move forward with the latest technologies because you got to carry all that extra with it, which, uh, you know, can make it. Um, bigger and buggier can also make it slower. Well, by having a 64-bit only processor, you can take out that 32-bit extra fluff and just concentrate on 64-bit instructions and what a 64-bit processor needs to do. Also, um, by having a 64-bit only processor, well, you don't, you know, you're you're 
you have a load off. You don't have to address things in a way that you make sure that the processor is addressing its 64-bit registry and all the information with the software. And, um, you know, because you can go in 32 or 64, you need to make sure that it runs in 64. And there, for developers, it's going to be also simpler in programming the future by having only 64-bit. But that also doesn't prevent you from running necessarily old software or hardware. It can if nothing is added, but there's always a possibility of having what we call virtualization. And virtualization can bring 32-bit apps if you need it. It's a little bit like the Apple Macs right now with the uh, new uh, ARM, the, uh, the Apple's you know, M1, M2, and, and soon to be M3 processors. They're not the same as the Intel CPUs, but things work because they have virtualization available that can actually emulate the past, emulate the old code needed so that old software can still work with the new processors that are way different. So there is definite advantage of having 64-bit only, um, it definitely would help and probably make um, the future of the processing and of the computers much faster also. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.